Hey y'all. Hey Jack Squad. How everybody doing? Hope all is well. And I hope you're making it happen for yourself. You got to make it happen for yourself, y'all. First of all, before we get to anything, anything else, I must discuss voting. Early voting has started. You must vote. Whatever city, whatever state, whatever county, whatever precinct, you must vote. And I am going to talk about this every single day. Y'all going to get tired of it until election day. You must vote, okay? You got to vote. Black folks, people died. We're standing on the backs of folks who died to give us this right to vote. This is a right. This ain't a privilege. This is a right, right? Gave us this right to vote. Well, it is a privilege to vote. It is. But this is a right that we have. And this is a duty. Okay? This is a duty that we have to vote. All right? People people, people got beat, killed, uh, went to jail. All kind of atrocities happened so that we can have uh, equal rights, civil rights, voting rights, all those rights. Okay? So I'm telling you guys to vote. And if you don't vote, I'm going to send the don't vote police to your house, all right? You gotta vote, y'all. Got to vote for the judges, the legislation, the, the, the Senate, all the laws and the bylaws and the everything, primary and general. You must vote. Don't miss a vote. Make it your duty. It's free. That's what I'm tripping on now. Here, uh, I guess because it's bigger, it was like that in Charlotte too where I was at. Uh, the polling place was a little far, but they got rides. If you ain't got no ride, they'll come get you. I hear on the radio, if you don't have an ID, they're going to get your ID, okay? There ain't no excuse. If there is no excuse, so what? You ain't studied the candidates. Go look on the Democratic website or the Republican website if that's what you are. Cast your vote because a no vote is a yes vote for the ops. Let me say that one more time. A no vote is a yes vote for the ops, okay? We got to get a better handle of this. And let me say this. I might make some folks mad with this, but so what? The people that I know that can benefit the most from voting do not vote. Let me say that again. The people that will benefit the most from a vote do not vote. That is the most, I can't even get the word out, ludicrous, absurd thing in the world. There's plans and policies and situations put in place to help you. Pookie and little Ray Ray keep going to jail. Keep voting that one Republican judge in so they can stay in there forever. Okay? We all got some Pookies and Ray Rays. If they ain't in our family, but they are neighbors. We know them. Right? Listen. The drug laws are unbalanced. Um, we all know is everything is racially divided. Right? We got to get these bad cops out of here. So therefore, you got to get these judges in here. Listen, y'all. Judges are so important. I, I don't even know if... The, in my mind, the judges is more important than the president, really, because the president could be puppeted. He probably got to do what everybody want to do. The judge sit up there on that bench by itself, okay? Uh, got to vote. Vote, vote, vote. Matter of fact, I got to put that in my description box. Vote, vote, vote. That's very important to vote, all right? Uh, I done got off that bandwagon uh, for right now, but you got to vote. And I'm going to talk about it every single day until election day. Um... And that's that's pretty soon. Uh right? Yeah, that's pretty soon. Um, anyway, it's the eighth, I think it is, the November eighth. Okay, I'm thinking it's next week as week after. So anyway, y'all, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. Like, share, comment, and subscribe, please. Um, I got a testimony too. And um all of my information, all of my social media stuff is down in the description box. Um, and you can always email me as well as Cash App. Now, let me tell you something about the Cash App, y'all. I was laying in my bed. This is how God works. This is a testimony for real. And I don't have to talk about it because I don't talk about every time somebody do something, but I have to tell y'all this. So I was laying in my bed, not last night, night before. I was laying in my bed thinking, um, what am I going to eat and what I'm going to, you know, what am I going to get given the opportunity to go to the grocery store, Right. Notice I said, given the opportunity. I'm real transparent, y'all. So, you know, you can judge me. You can do whatever. I don't care. But um, anyway, um, I tell the truth. That's one thing. So, you know, because I switched jobs, 
I, it, a few things got backed up because I have to wait a week in the hole. Like, I didn't know people were still doing that. But I had to wait. And then when I, you know, that week in the hole didn't amount to a food check. You know, it's just like I'm backwards. I'm I'm, I'm bagged up a little bit, right? But it'll be all right in a minute. So I've been uh, struggling financially, right? And um, I was laying in the bed calculating how I was going to eat and what I was going to eat, right? Do y'all I picked up my phone because I, I put a lot of notes in my phone, right? I picked up my phone for whatever reason. I don't know if you look on social media or write my note, but there was, that was the thought that I was having. And this is why God is so awesome. That was the thought that I was having when I picked up my phone, right? When I picked up my phone, I had a cash app. Now, I get cash apps from um, subscribers, right? Not a lot, but I get cash apps. But the reason why I'm talking about this one is because it was so profound to me because I, at that moment, I was having a crisis. Uh, the other day, one of my subscribers from the very beginning, when I was going live, uh, uh, what you call that when you go live? I'm going to say cash up. That ain't what they call it when you go live, right? Um, but um, at that very moment, I needed that, right? When I was laying in bed thinking and contemplating like, Lord, how am I going to eat, right? I'm trying to keep myself from crying. And I picked up my phone. It had to be, It was after midnight, right? And I picked up my phone and do tick, look at TikTok, whatever I picked up the phone to do, right? And saw the cash app, and I was like, wait a minute, that ain't right, right? And looked at it, and one of my subscribers, and this is the part, one of my subscribers said, sent, sent me $20 and said, have lunch on me. I almost cried. Because that's what I, and that's exactly what I did yesterday, right? I almost cried because I was in need. And God saw to it, right? Listen, y'all. I, You know, I ain't one of them people that try to, you know, I've had a lot of ups and downs in life, right? A lot of ups and downs. But my ups are always outweigh the downs, right? I don't even count the downs. I know I went through them. I went through that. On to the next, right? And I don't, I never look like what I'm going through, right? But I had to tell this story because it was so profound because... I, it was, it, it had just happened. I was just thinking that and I was just talking to God and thinking it and he had already fixed it. He had already fixed it, right? And so I say to that subscriber, I don't know if she wants her name out, but she knows who she is. And I, you know, I don't know if it's a way, I don't think it is that you can talk back to the people. All you can do is heart it, right? But that subscriber if you are watching, when you watch me, I want to give you a heartfelt thank you because you don't know what you did for me. You don't know what you did for me at that moment, right? Because I'm, you know, I'm struggling to pay my bills, keep my lights on, keep my gas on and all this stuff. Right? I got to pay a couple bills today, right? You know, so it's a struggle, but I know how to, I know how to struggle. I got a PhD in it, right? So what affects other people? They got to have a nervous breakdown or kill themselves. I just keep on moving, right? Because I know God going to make a way, right? So I had to share that with y'all just because it might be somebody watching that don't have no hope. Because I've been in hopeless situations, where I thought was hopeless situations, right? And I had to learn how to overcome that. That's why I'm telling y'all I'm an expert at the struggle. And people could look at me from the outside. My friends do not believe when I say I ain't got no money. They don't believe me, Right? Uh, because my outward appearance and how I keep my house, keep my car, keep this and that. But y'all don't understand, I don't have any vices. I haven't had any for about 20 years. So all my money go into me. Yeah, all my money went on me anyway. We would have been did. But what I'm saying is I had to tell this story because it, 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 it was so magical. You know, and I pray to God. And a lot of times I tell him, I expect you to work in a supernatural way. Right? A miraculous way. Right? I do. He is God. So I just had to share that with y'all in case anybody, um, you know, out there with no hope. It is hope. And he hears you when you pray to him. You got to ask him, though. Right? You got to ask. Now, I don't know why he ain't sent my man. But 
Anything else I wanted, I, I, you know, I get. I've never had a problem. You know, I might have a struggle to get to it. Some people get stuff easily. Some people have to struggle. But if you want it bad enough, you do what you need to do. So, okay, let me get off of that because I feel like I'm in church. But I needed to share that. I needed to share that because that person, again, like I said, I don't know if they want their name, you know, put out there like that. But the, it wasn't that she sent me the $20. It was what she said. She said, get yourself something to eat. Or either have lunch. It had something to do with food. It almost made me fall out the bed because I had just had that thought 30 seconds before. All right, I'm off of that. But anyway, y'all, I, I just needed to share that. Um, oh, I almost, oh, Lord. Anyway, I'm going to talk about, now, I'm going to, but I just didn't, I didn't get it all the way together. And I may do it later. I am going to do it later. Um, right, I'm going to talk about the Latrus. And let me tell y'all something funny. I follow him as Robert Hampton because, and the reason why I started following him was because he had cancer, stomach cancer, and it was a sad story. And he was on Facebook, and I started following. Him. Didn't realize till the other day that this is the Latruth. Now I've been looking at the Latruth stuff. Didn't realize it was one until the other day. But I'll talk about that later. Right now, I'm talking about Love and Marriage Huntsville, y'all. Love and Marriage Huntsville. And I am going to review Real Housewives of Potomac as well as the Married to Medicine uh, reunion. I got a lot to say about that. But the love marriage husband, let me tell y'all what happened. I was prepared to take my notes as I watched the show. What happened? Somebody called me, right? Now, it wasn't no regular somebody. Like, I am blessed to have about eight or nine close girlfriends that are like sisters. I ain't talking about good associates you kick it with out in the streets. I ain't talking about that. Because most of my close girlfriends, except for maybe one or two of them, we don't even hang out in the streets like that. Never really did. Well, maybe back in the day, some of them, but some of them, we ain't never hung out. They just, my, they, we just be my sisters, right? So when I get this call with this tea, hot, I, 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 had to, I had to take it, right? Now, when I got off of that call, somebody else called me, a gentleman, and I thought I'd entertain that for a moment, but he wasn't worth it. So I was like, ooh, God, let me, I got to go take a bath because I really want to watch my shows, right? And my sis gave me the tea and I missed, uh, I didn't miss, I watched it. I, I did not write down everything, so I had to go off the top of my head. But let me tell you this, the main highlight of Love and Marriage Huntsville is the sit down with the six original uh, players, or, or what I want to call them, players of Love and Marriage Huntsville. That is Martel and Melody, Kimmy and Maurice, and Letitia and Marceau. Now, uh, the ladies were dressed impeccably. They were very sexy, very ladylike. They look good. Now, let me say something. Is it me? Or did Kimmy get her nose done? Or is she her, or is her, um, uh, MUA just really shadowing or whatever they do to make your nose narrow because Kimmy looks absolutely gorgeous and absolutely different. Not saying she looked bad before because she didn't, but she looks different, right? Now, I keep saying I'm going to go somewhere and professionally get my face made so they can contour my nose and stuff like that, right? Because I got a big nose. I got a big nose and big lips and funny eyes. But, um, I said I was going to go and let them see what they do and get some tips from them. Because, you know, I watch these makeup artists on uh, TikTok, right? And they really be making their face. Guys, the guys are phenomenal, right? So, anyway, Kimmy just looks stunning, right? So, um, uh, they were all there. Now, what I liked, uh, Kimmy and, and Maurice came first and then Tisha and Marceau. And then Martel and Mel walked in. Like a black power couple, right? I said, ooh, look at him, right? It's a shame he messed that up. It's a shame. But I like the fact that he's still holding his family down. Him and Mel will always be family. That's the narrative they're going with. They'll always be family. You know, I didn't broke up with you. I don't care if I had 15 kids. You didn't get on my nerves. That's the end of that. But they're doing well, I hope, I guess, co-parenting and co-working because they're co-workers on the show, right? That's got to be tough. That's got to be tough because there's no way I want to see a Negro uh, every day or we got to shoot for three months in a row or have them long they shoot for. I got to look at Chief. 
Ooh, Lord. But anyway, they came in looking like a, 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 a black super couple, right? And um, as soon as they sat down and said their niceties and greeted everything, and Tisha said, well, you know, you go first or something, she said. He said, your mama got to go. Flat out said it. Your mama got to go. Now, after listening to Martell speak so well, right, I'm wondering, did, were those his thoughts or the production? Or what was it his idea to have the meeting? Or was it production's idea? Or, you know, I would like to know. At any rate, it, I think it was very productive, right? So they sit down and uh, Martell immediately, like I said, tell Tisha, your mama got to go. And Tisha, as usual, per usual, Look confused and disturbed and don't know what's going on. Listen, for you, you know, you you know your mama like that. You you you've been knowing her all your life. You know she's just a disturbance. Why there's a disturbance when she wants to be? She is a disturbance and she takes pride in being a disturbance. Okay? She takes pride in that, right? So there's nothing uh, unless you punch in her eye. Uh, ain't too much you could do. Carlos King would have to set her out of the, you know, he'd have to put her on punishment for a while. He would have to. Now, listen, I don't want nobody to lose their bag. Y'all know I always say that. But Wanda is changing the dynamic of the show. She's changing the narrative. And it's going to be love and hip-hop Huntsville, right? Uh, this show was based upon black excellence. Yes, Martell cheated, messed that all up far as his family goes. But we still got two other families and they brought another couple in, uh, Lou and uh, Tiffany. And then they brought, well, they had brought Destiny and her husband, but he didn't want no parts of it, right? So they tried again with, with Destiny, I mean, with Tiffany and Lou. Now, L Lou and Tiffany don't have to be there. And I'm gonna tell you why they don't have to be there. They are too good for the show. They're too good. They're too perfect. They don't need to be there. They don't need no counseling. They don't need nothing. They too good. That's why they need to go. We need somebody that's going to show real life. Right? It don't get no realer than controlling Martel, Marceau and little dumb dumb Tisha. Uh, the entrepreneurs, the go-getters of uh, uh, Maurice and Kimmy. And the power couple that started it all that has now had the biggest scandal on reality TV, Martell and Mel, right? They had to play that out in real life and for the people to see, right? I don't know how Mel does that. Um, I'm sure she probably cries at night in a corner somewhere. And then she get up and handle her business, right? But anyway, um, Wanda got to go. And I read comments from different bloggers, and everyone is saying the same thing. I said Wanda need to go, too. See, at first, she was colorful for the show. show. Colorful like Mama D. Colorful like Jim Jones' mama. Colorful like Candy's mama. You know, Candy's mama could go too far sometimes. Uh, who else had a mama on the show that was a little colorful, right? Um, uh, Keisha Cole mama. You know, she was colorful. But she went too far. You went too far with on the social media. See, listen, first of all, she at the age where, you know, she might have just got on social media not a few years ago or something. You know what I'm saying? Uh, she wasn't on no MySpace and all that stuff, right? I wasn't either. But I'm just saying. Uh, she likes to, she's a, uh, what you call it, a keyboard bully, right? And then she want to act tough. Like, you know, I'm from Bessemer. Like I said, I don't know if they get down in Bessemer. I don't know what they do in Bessemer, Right? But she said, like, you know, that's the capital of throwing hands, right? So Wanda needs to go because she's changing the narrative of the show. Well, what I found shocking, you know, Tisha says, well, what did my mama say? You know what she said. You didn't watch the show. You know what she said. You know what she always said. You don't talk, first of all, you don't talk about nobody's kids. And she said, she said that because... Martell has said he didn't know if that was his baby, so I told her to get a DNA. You... These kids got to grow up. They, the bigger ones probably watch the show, okay? Um, you got to keep your mouth off people's kids. Everybody got to keep their mouth off people's kids, right? And their mamas and them, right? 
Well, maybe not the mom, but mom might need to be checked a time or two. But um, Tish, Tisha didn't say what my mom said. She said, you all go tip for tat. That's what y'all do. She didn't say, I'm going to talk to my mama. I'm sorry for my mama. Even if, even if you didn't believe it, you should have said it to make peace. But she doesn't want peace with Mel. She does not want peace with Mel because she feels that Mel was trying to break up her marriage because hers got broke up. I believe that's why she's still mad at Mel, right? Now, prior to them going, uh, Martell called Mel and said, what would you like to get out of it? You know, because Martell is really trying to mend his friendships, even though after the fight, they now, he knows he ain't going to make no money with him, but he's trying to maintain the friendship, right? Which, with the collective, which I, which I, I, I'm, I'm down with that too, right? Um, but Melly said, well, we're not going to be friends. And, you know, she basically said, I don't want to be friends. I'm going to talk business, but we're not going to be sociable and kiki and ha ha. That ain't what she want to do. Right. And I don't know if Mel is scorned and directing some of that anger at Tisha. Cause I don't forgot why she's so mad with Tisha. I forgot. Right. I have forgotten. Um, I know Tisha's upset with her because she said they were both insinuating that Marceau was cheating. Listen, if he is cheating, Tiffany, I'm not Tiffany, uh, Tisha knows that he's cheating and she wants y'all to leave her alone so she can leave him, leave him alone and let him cheat in peace. Now, I said I was going to do a video on it. I saw a whole, I don't know what I saw. I don't know what it was on. I don't know if it was YouTube or Instagram about this woman the same woman they went online with and said, no, we ain't having no affair that she really is, but she got too much to lose and that's why she ain't going public and so on and so forth. I'm going to talk about that in another video. I was like, oh, so if that's the case, a lot of people in the comments were saying Tisha knows and they've been sworn to secrecy and they ain't going to talk about it. And that might be what's wrong with Mel because they said Mel, that's right, I forgot, uh, the producers offered this woman 10000 She said no. Mel says she could match that 10000 They wanted her to talk about the affair. Now, let me say something, y'all. I don't know for the life of me, it seems like everybody's goal on these reality shows is to break up a, way, a marriage. And then people say, well, we can't break it up if it's already a crack in it. Yeah, but don't actively, don't actively go and try to hurt somebody. That's the part I, I don't get with. They actively trying to tear each other to pieces, right? Um... Yeah, I saw that. I saw that little information. That, and I don't know. This is a legend. I don't know. But I saw it on something. And I can't tell you what. Because like I said, a lot of times when I'm looking at stuff, I'm looking at it in my bed at night. And I don't. I have no idea. You know, I forget. Right? I forget. Um, and so the, the woman, uh, she got the woman that we saw that said she's not even having no affair with, with Marceau. Is actually having an affair. That's what the people say. I don't know. That's what the people say, right? Um, I don't know if I can be with a man. I, well, maybe so for the bag. I, I'm going to take that back because Tisha Young, so she could do it for the bag at that age. Yeah. You know, I'm going to be with you. You're going to cheat and do what you want to do. You're going to go to Africa by yourself. That right there, when he came home, I'd have swung on him. I swung on him before he left when you had your suitcase in your hand. You ain't going to no Africa by yourself. But um, anyway, uh, Tisha sat there and then she said, y'all go tick for tat. And then Mel was trying to explain what happened. And then Stormy had stated to Kimmy or somebody that Mel be lying over there to Wanda. But, because that's what Destiny told her, right? Now, look, we all know that Melanie came for the it's. She came for it. That's what she was coming for. She had to be there anyway, so she came for it. I don't know. I keep kicking my thing, y'all. She came for it, right? So, uh, it happened, right? Now, Tisha never said, I'm, I'm sorry about my mama, talk about my mama. So, even on the show, Funky Dan even said, you need to tell your mama. She, Tisha, Tisha not gonna, she's not going to get it. And she, you know, she said that she come from, you, you know, you let your mama do whatever you want to do, basically, right? But she looked puzzled. She always looked like this, right? But, uh... Uh, what else I want to say? Let me go back to my notes. Now, listen, y'all, I'm going to be real honest with y'all. Besides uh, Tiffany and Lou, 
Uh, Tiffany says she's going to take the IUD out. She's going to leave it out for six months and then put it back in. If they don't get pregnant in the six months, then forget about it. So she's compromising. I don't believe Lou wanted to take it out. He looked funny when she was saying that. But I guess he's got to go with it because that's what you do in a relationship. You relate and you compromise, right? So, but this, this just don't bring nothing to the show. Because I don't like the fact that y'all left when the heat got on. See, the whole thing of reality is to show the reality. When the heat got on with the therapist and them at the cabin, you y'all left. You know, you say you had to leave. They always, something always got to happen, y'all. To me, they act like elitists. That's what they act like. Too uppity. Bougie. I don't like bougie Negroes. Um, but anyway, not a lot happened because the main highlight was the meeting. And then they did say, well, this is what, they had a plan of action. This is what we're going to do from now on. Oh, I forgot. I'm leaving a whole big part out. So as they're talking, I was shocked at this. Kimmy said, and I don't know, it just came like she pulled it out the sky. Maybe we probably missed something. That's probably what happened. And she said, um, you all need to control Mark. Maurice and Marceau need to control Mark, like y'all asking Tisha to control her mama. And I thought, why would she say that? First of all, he's a grown man. And I hear he cuts up on social media. I didn't start following him till today, so I'll see how much he cut up, right? But how would you think somebody can control somebody grown? A man. Uh, Tisha can't control Wanda, but you need to speak to Wanda, right? And I didn't know where Kimmy came. She, like she came out of left field with that. But like I said, we might have missed a part. So uh, Marceau flat out. See, Marceau is why I like Marceau. Hate him or, le or, or, or love him. Leave him or like him or however you say that. He say what it is. He said, I blocked him. I don't like it. You can't talk to him. So evidently, he's a real character. This The Mark brother is a real character. And I wonder if he's the one that I saw on a live some seasons back. When Maurice's baby mama, they was on live. I wonder if that's the same brother, right? But anyway, he said, I block, I, you know, I, I don't fool with him, right? Um, and it looks like they're afraid of the brother. I think he's the older brother, the bigger brother, or the something brother, right? I always thought Maurice was, Maurice is older than Marceau, so this brother must be older than both of them, right? Uh, and so, um, you know, they said, you know, control your brother. And, and that's why, that's how all this start. But that ain't how all this start. Wanda got on there. She told her girlfriends, watch me turn this out. Melanie, because see, she always fights Tisha's battles. So she was still fighting Tisha's battles. And now that her and Melanie are not friends, she's fighting that battle. That's all that is. That's all it is. You remove her and things might can go a little bit normal. Even though Stormy came in hot. But uh, now she's trying to tone it down, right? Which I don't believe you because you came in too hot, sis. You came in too ghetto to have a whole... She got a whole estate. I keep kicking my stand. She got a whole estate, right? When you got an estate, you don't act like that. Did y'all watch uh, Mary Madison Toy? You said, girl, I'm rich. Ain't nobody acting like that. I ain't in the hood no more. I ain't in Detroit no more. You know what I'm saying? So listen, I don't know what they're going to do with Wanda. I hear people say Carlos King likes Wanda on there and so on and so forth. Uh, you can't rile her in, though. You can't reel her in. You can't corral her, right? So I don't know, unless you just, just straight up punch in her eye. That's, you know, sit down, Wanda. Because she talk, and then she talk, and then she country talk. Like, she's a lot. She's a lot. So I don't know what else happened, y'all, because I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't write no notes. I don't know what else happened. Um, I put down here something that they were friendly and, uh, they were friendly and it looked like they were all getting along and they were having a good time, right? Now they were supposed to be eating dinner. I didn't see them eating. That's what makes me think they cut out some parts, right? That we didn't see. Cause then they got up and said, hello, I was waiting on the food to get delivered, right? So I guess they had ate and all that and they had been edited, right? But I wonder if Mel is just being super, super fake or did she feel good after the meeting? Was it a feel good? Because I felt good after the meeting. So I wondered, did she feel good after the meeting? Um, or she just deal with them. Uh, she just deal with them for the show, for purposes of the show. Uh, and then, you know, she always, she acts to me, she acts like they were never friends. Like, I don't get that part either. But anyway, y'all, that's my take on 
uh, Love and Marriage Huntsville. Wanda must go. Wanda's got to go. We're going to sit, put Wanda on timeout. That's what we're going to do. We're going to put her on timeout, y'all. Anyway, y'all, everybody be cool. Don't forget to vote. I'm going to keep saying that. Don't forget to vote, okay? Bye-bye.